Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, today, uh, me and Ronen are going to talk about, uh, about OSCAR, the Open uh, Software Supply Chain Attack Reference. So, start with a quick introduction. So, as mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Eyal Paz. I am uh, the VP of Research at Ox Security. Uh, I joined Ox when it was uh, just started two years ago. Before that, I began my journey in cybersecurity about 13 years ago at uh, Checkpoint, where I started from uh, network security and endpoint security. And uh, in the last role in Checkpoint, I was doing security research for the emerging products. So I got to, to deal with a lot of problems, including in the application security area. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Ronen Atias. Um, I'm a security researcher and architect, and security arch architect for Ox Security. Um, I have uh, 15 years of experience in various uh, security product companies, um, mostly uh, within other, as a researcher, but uh, in recent years I've moved uh, towards a uh, practitioner uh, position. Uh, I started the SRE program at Imperva, and um, uh, I was a security architect also, also at Imperva. And I'm not a... I'm I'm pretty decent guitar player, so. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's, I left it uh, in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm air guitar, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we are going to talk about, first we're going to build up talking about the uh, software supply chain uh, challenges that we all know about, but just to get the ground straight. And then we are going to talk about the common approaches like what people are doing today to actually deal with them. Uh, then we will move, move on to talk about OSCAR, uh, describe you the work that we did uh, building this framework. And then we will uh, wrap up with practical use case of how you can actually use the OSCAR framework for your own good and maybe even extend it. So basically the benefit that expected from embracing OSCAR is basically getting more and more capabilities and, and tooling with the threat modeling process. And also when you're building and planning the application security program or you want to evaluate it, how it deals with uh, uh, real uh, life threats. And also uh, measure it and have KPIs. Oscar also can help you with that. <coughs> So starting with the uh, existing uh, software supply chain challenges. So as we all know, software today are being com it's being composed like a puzzle. When I, I guess that most organizations today, when we when they are getting to to uh, write their own software, they don't start with building an operating system. They are building an application uh, that will sit on top of a operation uh, a system, and they won't write it out of scratch. They will use a lot of frameworks and open source libraries. And it's common today to say that uh, over 90% of the code is actually open, uh, not proprietary code, but open source code. And software supply chain is, is, is much, much more than the only source code that we are using. It includes the uh, development, uh, uh, build and runtime environment, all of the SaaS services that we are using, and of course, also the uh, software dependencies. So a typical NPM install command yields dozens of vulnerabilities. Uh, and I, I remember the first time that I uh, saw this kind of prompt. Uh, back then I was leading a team of researchers and we were asked to join a development team working on a new product. Uh, so we never experienced with Node before. And when we ran the NPM uh, install command, each one of us on our own, uh, on our own machine, we were all alarmed. Because we as a, secur as a security professionals, we, we, we understand that something is wrong here. How the developer could not see that NPM is alerting for so many vulnerabilities. So we contact the, the, the developer. He said, ah, oh, you can ignore it, just move on. Uh, so I, I said, how can you move on? There's dozens of critical vulnerabilities uh, which NPM yield. 
so eventually the developer said that this is not even his code. It go, uh, the vulnerabilities are in the infrastructure team code, which he must use to publish the, the application. So we see this is like an internal so supply chain within, within the company, but we can see that the developer, like, they know, everybody knows that there are so many vulnerabilities with open source, but they accept the risk with or without understanding the consequences. And eventually, it's bring up that nobody really cares. And developer will, will always push back this kind of, uh, of security alerts. And this is their nature. This is not the, what they are actually uh, dealing, with, dealing with. This is not what they are paid to do. So if you know the, the fable uh, of the scorpion and, and, uh, and the frog, when there's a flood in the, in the forest and, and uh, the scorpion begged the frog that it, it will help him across the stream, and the frog uh, uh, agrees, and eventually uh, midstream, the scorpion stings the frog and they're both drowning. And the frog asks, why? Why did you, did, you, did you do that? We will both drown. And the scorpion said, what can I do? I'm just a scorpion. So I guess you understand how this relates to the, uh, our day-to-day -day, uh, work. So there are multiple attempts to actually bring developers into uh, this kind of uh, problem, that they, they will be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. But for example, when introducing IDE extensions that should help with security to developers, and I've, I have personally have made this experience as well, developers really, really hate that someone is telling them that their perfect code has some security issues. And now, in, in a, a less intrusive kind of solution uh, is introducing the security inside of the pipeline. But every uh, software developer is also an hacker, and if the pipeline failed, he will find a way around it. Now, a nice example that I can uh, give out of real life is when I help uh, uh, a customer deal with a situation where uh, he had this kind of uh, pipeline block in place because of a secret encode which uh, the developer pushed. Now, the developer knew that something is wrong because his pipeline failed because of a secret in code. Now, you know what the developer did? It simply did base64 on top of the secret, and then the pipeline passed. So basically, developers will find a way around any kind of security obstacle that you will uh, put uh, that will block him of doing the work. But what it, what interesting is when uh, the security guy come to the uh, developer and ask him, why did you do that? Because obviously, he understand that he's doing something uh, which is wrong. And he said, well, if, if I would waited for the DevOps to, to put uh, the, environment vi the secret as an environment viable, it will take a lot of time. So basically, developers are not really evil. They just want to get their job done. And eventually, the business support this kind of, uh, of behavior because a uh, developer brings the business value. And eventually, when it will escalate, usually they, they will get uh, this kind of backup. And the story is that we have a lot of stakeholders in place with different priorities. And each one has a different role. And this all uh, especially come into place when you try to triage a security issue or there's a, an actual incident and everybody is blaming everyone. So we are really, really missing some kind of common languages uh, uh, that everybody can work with to improve. And of course, we want to stay focused here because everyone wants to support the business. Everyone has a shared goal. So. Common, appro common approaches to deal with that. Yeah. So, you know, uh, everything was fine until, you know, SolarWinds, right? Uh, and suddenly there's this new attack surface that uh, nobody even thought about, a very lucrative kind of uh, attack surface, the, the, the supply chain itself. And, uh, you know, my manager comes to me, I was an architect uh, back then, and she tells me, 
Well, what do you, what do we know about you know our supply chain here? How do we produce uh, s software? Um, so it turns out that this is like a super complex process. A lot of stakeholders, as, as Al mentioned, uh, you know, DevOps, uh, developers, operations, sometimes IT for parts parts of the supply chain, and this is like a very huge problem. So you know, I started my research, and uh, basically, you know. You know, these are the goals that you know I set to 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 solve. Uh, you know, to secure the supply chain, of course, to be able to do proper threat modeling uh, or security assessment, uh, to provide training and awareness to that exact problem, and just making sure you know that it will be as light as possible because you know the business needs to 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 run. Um, and basically, oh wait, so I started, and you know the first step I, I went into into is compliance. You know, most companies, most uh, major companies, or a lot of major companies are, are already compliant uh, and, and adhere to some kind of standard. They may be SOC 2, uh, ISO 27K, could be PCI, HIPAA, and so on. And I, you know, starting there, saying you know, you know, if we if we if we do that, maybe the, the problem is actually solved already, and we don't need to do anything. Um, and guess what? Uh, it's no. I mean. Uh, those, you know, as, as you know, as much as I like uh, standards, and, and, and I think I think we we all agree that these, these are um, necessities uh, to, to for a security program. This is not something that you that that you know works on every level and provides a solution for everything that needs to be secure. So, not to mention the fact that you know, in most cases it doesn't really tell you what to do, but, but just you know just you know. Uh, but just talk about, you know, you need to have access control, you need to have uh, encryption, and so on and so on. So it's, it's good. I mean, in some, even some uh, um, compliance standards do have a uh, little bit of information about secure coding, uh, but it's not there. It's, it's not doing that. Um, next step, security frameworks. Again, this is like, you know, our bread and butter when it comes to sec security practitioners. Uh, this is kind of my short list that I that I you know had during that uh, kind of uh, research. Um, <coughs> sorry, starting with uh, OWASP top ten. Of course, this is like the, the first step, you know, towards that. And maybe it's OWASP top tens actually because you know th there are m many others, no, not just the uh, AppSec uh, top ten. Um, and it's a good it's a good kind of you know document, but you know it's it's an awareness document. It's not something that you can work on and work with. Uh, this is something you know. OSP is This is what you know. OSP is talking, uh, telling about uh, the OSP top ten. Uh, admittedly, you know, some companies do use it as some kind of baseline for their as a standard, but it's not. It's not. It's not good enough. Uh, I mean, the fact that it's it's a to it's a top ten just uh, uh, reminds us that it's not comprehensive enough to to develop like a, a program around it. Um, Another very, very cool pro project from OWASP is the Software Component Verification Standard. Again, this, this touches um, supply chain and how, how to produce software. Um, again, I'm not telling, you know, every, everything is fine. I mean, I mean the, the information is great, but you need to do a lot of work around it in, in order to, to produce that. And if we go back for a second on the goals, like awareness is, a pr is, is not something that you can, you know, uh, dig out of it or doing threat modeling. Uh, next step that I went to is NIST. NIST has like a huge library of, of standards, starting well with the, like the, the 853, with, which is like a com very comprehensive uh, uh, standard uh, for security and, and privacy. Uh, again, this is not, does, doesn't cover sp uh, uh, specifically uh, supply chain at all. <coughs> However, you know NIST is a very active kind of uh, uh, organization, and, and there are other uh, uh, standards within NIST that you know might be able to to, to help uh, to create the, a program to secure the supply chain, uh, namely uh, 800/2018, which is the Secure the Software Development Framework, and within uh, 800/204, there's a, there's a draft for uh, integration of software, uh, software supply chain in the DevSecOps CI/CD, So, so, so that's, a, that's a great place to, to look into. But again, you need to, to crunch a lot of information out of it, and you need, to, you need to do a lot of work in order to make it something that is workable. Uh, CIS benchmarks, 
everybody knows, I don't know if you love it or not, uh, but it's, a, it's again a good resource, very specific, that provides hardening guides to specific uh, platforms. And recently they released the CIS benchmark for GitHub, which I, you know, I read it uh, and um, it's, it's good. I mean, it, it does touch a lot of the uh, aspects of supply chain security. Uh, the problem is it, that it's GitHub. It's not, you know, if you're GitLab, Jenkins uh, kind of guy, you know, kind of organization, you, you need to do work there to, in order to, to make it workable for you. Um, Salsa, I think everybody that uh, is uh, doing some, you know, work around supply chain is uh, getting to, to Salsa. Um, Salsa is a project that started with uh, Google and th they're using a version of it uh, internally since uh, 10 years, for, for, ten, for the past 10 years. Um, great uh, framework, really. Uh, it, it models very nicely the supply chain and, uh, uh, and the threats and, and many of the threats within the supply chain. Uh, but it's not complete. Uh, it, I mean, it's it composed of uh, uh, three tracks uh, where at this point in time only the build track is, is, uh, is, um, is completed. So the, the other tracks being uh, source and uh, build uh, systems. This is not something that is documented or, or, or you know, so you cannot do a lot with it. So, and th this is a very big part of supply chain. Um, a MITRE ATT&CK, okay? I think every security practitioner for the past 10 years have used, used MITRE ATT&CK uh, at some level. Really great, I, 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 I really like it as a, as a practitioner. Um, but as you can see here, supply chain is just a block, a very small block within the, the original uh, MITRE ATT&CK framework. So this is not really going to, to do the trick for us. Uh, lastly, a bunch of publications all the time. I mean, attacks are happening all the time. We have, you know, there are really great blogs, tweets, newsletters, whatever. Everything is great, but you need a lot of time uh, to, to process it and, and to create something that, is, that you can work with. Um, a lot of information, you know, very little time for us as uh, practitioners. So this is exactly where we come into place uh, with Oscar, the open software supply chain attack reference. So till now, all, all, all of the things that we cover talked about best practices and how can we make sure that our uh, code it doesn't affect by, the, by this kind of vulnerabilities and we make sure that we had this and this kind of configurations. But what we found uh, that, uh, uh, that is missing is some, something which is similar to what actually MITRE solved with uh, their attack mat uh, matrix. Now, the difference between uh, MITRE attack <coughs> matrix and the other frameworks that in the MITRE attack matrix, they, they put themselves in, in the attacker uh, shoes. So, they, it's actually documenting which attack steps attacker can, uh, can use, what they are a, a tactic and techniques, and from there, how can they perform any kind of an attack. So this is exactly the same concept that we implemented in OSCAR, but with respect to the uh, software supply chain, tackling with all of the kind of the problems that we witness as builders ourselves, as practitioners, and all, but also from the mindset of the attacker. So basically we build a framework which is very, very uh, similar to MITRE, for, uh, same concept, just uh, fill in all of the uh, uh, tactics, uh, uh, techniques with the relevant items. So for example, something that we found missing uh, in the in the existing framework is actually mentioning for uh, specific uh, techniques which we are actually seeing that organization are mostly vulnerable for and they are very very tend to miss so one of which is dependency confusion so dependency confusion i will 
explain uh, in short, it's a very, very simple kind of an attack which was uh, uh, released to the world about two years ago where it's actually uh, exploit a uh, design flaw on package managers still relevant today where uh, as developers say it's not a bug it's a feature where the package manager uh, can work in parallel both with uh, private registries and public registries now if there is a, a collision in the in the name then it, it it won't prioritize the private over the public, it, was, it will just take the higher version. So in this case, if uh, an attacker could find out what is the uh, name of a, uh, of a private uh, artifact, then it, it could just register the same package in the uh, public uh, registry with his uh, uh, own uh, backdoor. And from there, from there the road to, uh, to remote code execution in production is very short. So, and from, uh, uh, we did some research regarding this specific kind of uh, vulnerability, which we published a few weeks ago. And basically we find out that about 50% uh, of the applications today are vulnerable for this kind of uh, vulnerability. So it's very easy for organization uh, to, to ignore this kind of vulnerability because it doesn't appear in any kind of uh, framework or any, uh, like the, in the OWASP top 10, you won't find it, not in the SIS benchmark as well. So you won't find it basically documented anywhere. It's not that nobody knows about it. It's just when you are actually constructing your application security program, it's easily left out. And Oscar can help you to bring it out to the light. So you make sure that even if you're not, not treating this exact problem in the next queue or then in the next year, that you should know that when, when uh, someone asks you regarding what are your current blind spots or if there's an attack, active attack right now, are you vulnerable? You will know because you have made this kind of preparation. So in OSCAR, we document each kind of, uh, we are not, it's just, it not, it's not just a, a matrix. You can, it's a, a more of a dynamic document. You can actually click on any item. You will get a, a proper description, but not only description, but also detection, like how you can, how you can actually detect if there is all, already an active attack going on using this kind of attack step. And with after detection also come mitigation. So in the case of dependency confusion, the detection and mitigation are actually very, very simple. You just to need to make sure that you register your own, uh, your own packages uh, you, and you, you're saving the names on the public registries. But basically, uh, Oscar <coughs> provides you not only the titles, but also what, what, are, what actions you can actually take to improve your security posture. And also, if you're looking for more information, of course, there is also reference. Here, for example, we are uh, referring to the original uh, blo uh, blog post by Alex Pearson, the ethical hacker which actually uh, released this kind of an attack to the world. So another example that I will go through uh, very quickly is the typo squatting or, and malicious packages in general. So there was also a good talk uh, yesterday that was concerning that here in OWAS. Uh, now earlier this year, a PyP, the Python, the Python uh, uh, public registry had to suspend registration of new packages because it became such a huge issue because uh, in a certain point of ta in time, most of the newly registered packages were actually malicious. So obviously something is wrong. And what's really disturbing is that today, most organizations still don't have, have any kind of mechanism which can detect that or mitigate that. And we did such an experiment when we actually tried to see how difficult it, it is for an attackers. 
So we took some popular uh, open source package and we, d we figured, we tried to, to, to type of squat it, to register uh, uh, our own dummy uh, package with a close enough name. And it took us less than five minutes to do it. No effort at all. So you can guess uh, what are the benefits for an attacker to do so. It's very, very, uh, it's an attack that is very, very simple to implement. And uh, the revenue can be very, very high. Again, if, if uh, a malicious package gets to your uh, runtime environment, the results can be catastrophic. So again, we have the same kind of uh, 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 detection and mitigation, description, reference for all of the uh, tactics and techniques that we are documenting. Now, Oscar is more than that. Before of that, we talked about stakeholders, and there are different roles uh, all around. Uh, for example, there could be some uh, DevOps guy in charge of the CI CD posture. So he can actually get a specific kind of, uh, of matrix, which is specific for CI CD. There could be another security champion, which is responsible only for open source sec uh, security aspect within his department. So again, he, uh, he can get an Oscar filter with only with the relevant uh, tactics and techniques which are relevant for his kind, kind of work. In general, Oscar, it has several views, which we call realms. Uh, which provide also a common language because some te uh, uh, techniques are uh, relevant to more than one realm. So this also provide, uh, can, can, uh, can be used for achieving the, the common language that we are missing uh, as much. One more uh, uh, benefit of, of OSCAR that it's provide, we are also tracking campaigns. So we are documenting any uh, 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 campaigns that has a lot of impact on, uh, on the industry as test cases, where we are looking for on two sides of the campaign. We are looking off on the actual target of the software supply chain in the code coverage. It was code cover itself, but we are also looking on the cascading effect of the uh, uh, software supply chain attack which in the Kotkov bridge case, it would be all of the Kotkov customers which were affected by this kind of an attack. Uh, so you can play both parts, like how you protect your own organization ag against a, a, a software uh, supply chain attack uh, as the target or as the second uh, uh, tier of the cascading uh, software supply chain attack. So, so I, let's yeah. see so, some so, practical so, so let's see what we can do with that, right? So there's a lot of information there, and you can do a lot of stuff, you know, based on that, uh, uh, on the Oscar matrix. Uh, I mean, you can build incident response plans, for instance. You can uh, evaluate tools against specific problems that you have or spe specific realms that you, that you need to, to protect. You can uh, even do threat hunting on top of that, like, you know, you know understanding where the attackers go and, and see Know, and look for, look for them there. Uh, but I'm going to talk about uh, other stuff. Um, th fir first, uh, threat modeling, uh, awareness, and uh, tabletop exercises. I think this is a... So just before, before we dig in, you know, does anyone here perform threat modeling as part of their position? Yeah, that uh, seems right. The, um, did you do any threat modeling on your supply chain recently or now or in the future? I do threat modeling for the open source companies that use GitHub. Okay. So th there's yeah, one. So <laughs> yeah, so there's one. So I think, you know, we know that that's a problem. I mean, I mean for doing, doing uh, threat modeling for like applications is, you know, it's a template, right? You have a web application, I don't know, microservices. We know how to deal with that. Uh, uh, supply chain is, uh, is, uh, is different and, uh, and mostly overlooked when it comes to, to, do, to performing th threat modeling. Now, I'm not going to, you know, go inside and do like a complete kind of threat modeling session. Um, 
but you know, let's begin by you know first talk talk about like the the, the principles of uh, threat modeling. This is this uh, these four questions which, which I took from the threat modeling manifesto. Uh, so what are we building? What can go wrong? Uh, what are we going to do about it? And uh, did we do a good enough job, doing, uh, you know, protecting? So let's keep that in mind. So first of all, what are we building? So uh, here it's, you know, how are we building? Maybe the question is more correct. Um, so this is like a sort of like a standard uh, uh, supply chain uh, for software. Uh, I think this covers most uh, uh, processes, m most supply chains in organizations. Uh, you have developers that push source code uh, to, to the SCM, to the source code management, you know, GitLab, GitHub, or whatever. Um, of course, they also consume a lot of open source uh, code uh, from open source, uh, um, um, and open source libraries from repositories. And sometimes they also take like binary artifacts, running, running binary art artifacts as they develop from public artifact repositories, I don't know, like Docker Hub, for instance. Uh, from there, they go. The the, um, the next step is CI, the CI/CD uh, process, where the artifacts, the code is built, compiled, uh, um, uh, containers are made up. Um, so that's that's one. Then usually goes to an art, some kind of some sort of artifact repository, and then to the cloud or to, to the consumer. So this kind of, I think this is like the, the the major part of software supply chains. So I would like to focus specifically on, for as an example, uh, on CI/CD, the CI/CD process. So you know what can go wrong here. So with Oscar, it's pretty easy to to figure out or, or to get some kind of you know uh, understanding on what can go wrong with CI/CD. If you just you know click on CI/CD posture within the Oscar uh, framework, you would get relevant uh, adversary uh, techniques. Um, that are relevant to, to CI/CD, right? Yeah. So it do doesn't really matter on what you know. What kind of uh, threat modeling methodology do you use? Like uh, you know, Dread, Pasta, Stride, Attack Trees. It, it basically boils down to you know what can go wrong here. What what kind of you know what, what is the bad story here? So th these are just examples of like techniques that are relevant to CI/CD. You know, vulnerable CI/CD plugins, secrets and configuration files. Um, Privilege the CI/CD runners. Those are, you know, stuff that you know um, happened uh, as, as attack steps in, in, in various places. And we also, you know, uh, um, we know how to, we know how to uh, we use a lot of information to produce those uh, attack techniques that uh, that might affect your uh, CI/CD. Um, let's move on. Let's talk a little talk a little, talk a little bit about uh, awareness. So. Um, you know, attacks, supply chain attacks happens all, all the time. Um, and I think, you know, you have your, your, the organization asking you, does this, could this happen to us? I mean, are we susceptible to that kind of an attack? Um, and also you, you want to raise awareness amongst your developers, DevOps, DevSecOps, whatever. So let's take the uh, 3CX desktop supply chain that happens a few months ago. Uh, just to a small recap, it's a, a 3CX is a, a soft phone, is a soft phone uh, manufacturer, uh, pr produces like uh, software for vo voice over IP. They have 600,000 uh, customers. Um, and they, they, they got hacked. Uh, one of their developers downloaded this outdated trading software, which in turn um, uh, helped like the attackers get into the 3CX uh, supply chain and infect their software. So what exactly happened? I mean, you can Google it. It's uh, about 440,000 results. Uh, so you, know, you can start. Uh, but you can also just go into Oscar and look in the campaign page uh, and get a very concise summary of that event. So you, you get like what, what exactly happened in a few, a few lines. Uh, you can get the, the, um, the specific attack uh, um, techniques that were used over the, uh, the attack matrix, you know, over the kill chain that we, that we have in, uh, in the Oscar attack matrix. And the timeline or the, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the attack, again, using the same lingo, the same Oscar techniques uh, 
and terminology. Plus, you know, some very short uh, explanations on that. So it's really easy to answer the question, you know, are we, uh, can, can this happen to us? And furthermore, if you, know, you know, if you want to pass that information or raise awareness, this is much easier than, you know, just uh, you know, creating some kind of blog or internal blog or, or, um, or just sending an email. So you have this very concise kind of uh, view on, on that event. And you know, you know, you know how, how engineers are. You know, we, we, we like to think in bullets, so, so this works for us. Um, next thing, let's talk, uh, let's talk a little bit about tabletop exercises. Uh, you know, from time to time we do that to, to prepare and to see you know, if we have any gaps on that. Um, and we can pivot from the, the same campaigns to produce those kind of uh, tabletop exercises. You know, you can ta just take one of those uh, campaigns, you know, change it a little bit, change the naming, you know, to fit your specific environment. And voila, you have a tabletop exercise. Of course, you can you know, also, if you like, you can pick and choose uh, from the Oscar framework. I mean, th the tactics are laid out as an, a kill chain, so you can traverse it and, and choose your, your own kind of story um, to, to produce that uh, tabletop uh, exercise. <coughs> um, lastly, uh, as we mentioned, this is an open source project. This is managed uh, in, in, uh, in GitHub. Of course, we have, we have the site, the pbomb.dev, that, you know, this is the, the UI for it. But everything is managed in, uh, in GitHub. Um, everything is a YAML file, so very easy to uh, edit and add or change. Again, and we encourage the community to, to join that effort. I think uh, um, we, we can all earn from, from that kind of uh, information and information flow. Um, and again, it's an open source project, pull requests, uh, discussions, bugs, issues. Uh, so please, please join the effort to, for, for, to add uh, information in, in, in here. So this is an example of a uh, campaign, for instance. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, questions? Begin. <laughs> I don't know this guy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But do you have uh, some um, a way to notify us, like if you were subscribed to this RSS or any other? So if there is a uh, campaign happening somewhere in the world that you mm. Yeah. So we will be more proactive on our end and not be reactive mm -hmm. to come get that from the news, right? And then we get escalations in the conflict. Yeah, so one of the benefits of uh, us making this project open source available via GitHub that anyone can just start the project. So if you start the project, then you, you can get notification for any discussion going on. So this is like kind of uh, uh, the modern kind of RSS feed. And, and again, if, if you find something lacking uh, or you, you want to document a campaign yourself, then basically this is just a, a, a YAML file uh, to fill as uh, Ronan described. And we already have all of the uh, building blocks in place, the the, all of the techniques. And again, if you are missing a technique, no problem, we can add another technique as a building block. So we build it in a relatively friendly way and in the periodic, every kind of uh, periodic time we are releasing it to the pbom.dev uh, uh, and so you get also uh, like it being shown in the website. Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's very dynamic. I mean the, the information there, uh, I mean we just recently added uh, that Jeremy Long, uh, you know, based on, uh, Jeremy Long gave a, a talk yesterday about the uh, build time dependencies and, you know, we added it because, you know, it's, it's important to know about that. Um, so it's very dynamic. We add it as we go. 
And again, I think the community here is crucial because it's very hard to get like information, like good information. Um, I mean, we crunched through like blogs and uh, RCA reports just to understand, you know, what happened because in, in most cases it's a lot of uh, uh, inside information that, that we kind of lack. So, so we need you guys. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, sure. No, no, it's open source free. Just use it. The we encourage you know to, you to use it. Yeah. Yeah. So the website is is open. It's pbomb.dev, and the GitHub repository obviously is a public repository. So all of the content is free. And again, we encourage uh, you guys to be a part of the community. And also, I just want to mention that Oscar is not just us. Mm -hmm. Os behind Oscar, there's a couple of dozen of people which already contribute. Uh, some contribute only in the discussion. Some are uh, actually uh, dire uh, security directors and uh, CISOs, which are, we actually interviewed wh while building Oscar. So this is actually a team effort. And as the community grow more and more, and this is why we are here today, to spread the word. And to try to recruit some more uh, po uh, people to the project. And again, you can use it free of charge. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you.